All right, in this video, I'm gonna be framing out around this ductwork. The larger duct is the cold air return, and the smaller duct is for the hot air. I am not gonna be framing out much of the steel beam. I'm gonna do that at a later time. However, where it is near the duct, I will capture the steel beam within the confines of this framing. And my plan for the remainder of the steel beam that doesn't get framed out today is to use oriented strand board and two by twos and frame it with just the OSB and two by twos. But I'm gonna do that on a, a completely separate day. So I'm gonna take the framing right off this floor joist. So that'll be the extent of how far I'll go out here. I'll bring the framing right along this hot air uh, duct. And then I'll extend the framing just slightly past the end of the cold air return here. And when I do the metal beam, I'll eventually tie everything in together. For this, I just got six two by fours and six two by twos. I regretted buying the two by twos. I didn't know they were gonna be so expensive and I would have been uh, better off just rip cutting some two by fours. So this chunk of cold air return is about 12 feet. I could have done, I guess, with a, a 12 foot two by four but uh, instead I just got a whole bunch of eight foot two by fours, which is fine. I'm just gonna do it in two pieces and I'll do it so that the ends connect on a floor joist. So really the big thing you need to know is what is the lowest point that your framing is gonna have to clear underneath the ductwork. And for me, it is eight and a half inches. So just kind of check it in a few different spots to confirm that eight and a half inches is the lowest point that the duct hangs down. So as long as my framing can go under eight and a half inches, it should be good. And for me, because the ceiling's fairly low in this house, I want to frame everything really tight to the ducts. So there's no risk of hitting your head or anything like that. So now that I know the lowest point on the ducts and therefore know how low I have to bring the framing, I'm now going to figure out how far my framing is going to have to be in the horizontal plane away from that steel beam. I could use the 2x4 wall as reference, but I figured that the steel beam runs the entire length of the basement. It will be more uniformly consistent. For me, it's about 26 inches, maybe like 25 and 3 quarters. I'm going to mark that distance all the way down the entire length of the cold air return on all the floor joists. So I know how my ladder is going to line up when I go to attach it to the floor joists. So for the top portion of the ladder I'm going to build here, I'm going to use a 2x4. For the lower portion, I'm going to use a 2x2. Although if you want to just use 2x4s, that'd be fine. Or if you want to use just 2x2s, that'd be fine as well. It only has to hold up drywall, so it's not like it's going to have a large amount of weight on the wood. And I am cutting these 8-foot sections down just a little bit so that I can join my ladders on a floor joist and not just have them hanging out in between two floor joists for where I join them up. And that's just to achieve better stability in the two ladders and ideally ensure that the drywall doesn't crack over weak joints. And then for all of the rungs, I'm also gonna use two by fours. So in this case, I'm cutting the two by fours for the rungs at exactly seven inches. And that's gonna allow the two by two to sit just below the ductwork. The first two by four I cut was about seven feet long. And now I'm gonna cut six of the seven inch two by fours. And that's gonna allow me to go 16 on center for the spacing of each of these seven inch pieces of ladder rungs. I'm just using regular construction screws, nothing special. And I am putting the ladder rungs, I guess sideways to the top plate of the framing I suppose you can go also in the same orientation as the top plate, but putting them this way, then the, the two by two can just sit on top of them a little bit easier. And then for each of the rungs, I'm just using two screws and not doing too much special here, just making sure everything's lined up and flat and flush. I didn't mark the 16 on centers. I just ran the tape measure out and had it on top of the two by fours to indicate where the 16 on center was. And now I'm coming around with the construction screws and slamming them through the two by two into the ladder rungs. And you can see how the ladder looks. So definitely easier with two people, 
but I'm just using a two by four to hold the ladder structure in place. And because I marked out where the ladder has to go on each of the floor joists already, everything lines up very easily. And to screw this in place, I'm doing two screws on each of the ends and then one screw in the middle. For the second portion of the ladder, I did the exact same thing for the construction of it. Obviously, it's a little bit shorter, which is why there's only five of the two by four ladder rungs. And then same deal for the amount of screws I'm using, two into each of the ends and then one into each of the floor joists for floor joists that are not on the end of the ladder structure. Now, because these two pieces are independent of each other, I don't want any drywall that's gonna get hung on there to, to split on that seam. So I'm just gonna take a chunk of two by four that I was gonna throw it anyway and, and screw that onto the back of each of the ladders so that they're sort of connected and so they won't move independently. Then the next thing I'm doing is just measuring the distance from the ladder framing that I made to the drywall on the uh, wall for my staircase. And I'm putting a couple of two by fours in. I'm also using a bunch of two by twos for the horizontal members. And you can see that I'm running the two by four sideways, which is kind of weird, but it's gonna allow me to keep the framing as tight to the duct as possible. Obviously I ran them vertical. I would be losing at least an inch of height. So like I said, this is gonna keep things a little bit tighter. I do use a lot of bar clamps when I'm doing this. Obviously, if you're working by yourself, bar clamps are very helpful. So to keep the horizontal piece level, I'm just using that bar clamp, adjusting it as needed and making sure that it's level. Obviously the bar clamp can go up and down. And then you also need to make sure that the ladder is plumb or vertical as well. So you need to look at this in more than just the one plane. And then just to make sure everything was a little bit more supported, I, I do throw a two by four block under each of the horizontal members. In areas where I could put pressure on the framing from another wall, I do use the clamps to push on the framing structure. And then once I've got two of the horizontal members in, I just take a two by four, put it up against the, the two members, and now I don't need to worry about the bar clamp on the steel beam side. So constantly checking that the ladder is vertical or plumb, and then just making sure that the horizontal structures are level. And like I said, I did use a mix of two by fours and two by twos for the horizontal members. And again, just throughout, I'm using construction screws the entire time. And then once everything's done, just pull off that two by four that was being used to template out the uh, position of all the other horizontal members. I did put a few extra two by twos in just so I can clear the water lines. And then you can see that everything's leveled off to that one floor joist on that end. Once I frame out the rest of the beam, I will tie in the ladder to the beam framing. And just a quick test to make sure that the two by twos are strong enough to hold up drywall. I am much heavier than drywall and they are holding me up no problem. So this is gonna be good to go to hang drywall on for sure. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.